Hey everyone, my name is Vinalin, and in this video we're going to have a look at OpenWama, completely free and open source reproducible version of Facebook's Wama. And the model is trained with 7 billion parameters and already has some checkpoints that we're going to have a look with the Hugging Face Transformers library within a Google Co-op notebook. Let's get started. This is the OpenWama repository. And the first thing that you're seeing here is that the guys are releasing a preview of the 7 billion parameter open WAMA model. And first, the first one was trained with 200 billion tokens. And then they provide also a checkpoint that is trained with 300 billion tokens, which we're going to use in this video. And they're talking about uh, beginning of sequence token ID, which in our case is not needed, but still we're going to do that in this video since we're going to use the 300 billion tokens that's not required and they talk of the way that they train the model on the red pajama data set so this is a very large data set and it's open one and you can see that they're using easy lm library which is also available on github and you can try it out for yourself in this video we're going to try the hugging face transformers version of this model and they're providing this training course, which uh, looks quite good. I mean, like for such a large model, it's still looking that it's converging and then they may benefit from even longer training. And they provide this evaluation right here. And you can see that they are comparing WAMA, the original Facebook WAMA model to open WAMA. And you can see that on some of the responses right here, there are cases that WAMA is performing better and there are cases that open WAMA is performing better. For example, here, this CBF1 score probably and the accuracy, you can see that the WAMA is providing 0.36 or 36%, I guess, and then 38% for the open WAMA. And of course, there are cases like bull Q where WAMA is beating this open model, but they look a lot much uh, much better comparable compared to what we had with let's say gpt g so this model at least on this evaluation looks to be working quite well and here they are talking about the easy lm framework and the hugging face hub and then these are the authors they are from berkeley ai research and they have equal contribution thank you guys for doing this work and you can go and follow those guys I have a Google Co-op notebook that is already running and this one is running with a Tesla T4. I also have a machine that is using more RAM since you need a lot of RAM to download this model or load this model. So the first thing that I'm doing here is to actually clone the repository that contains the weights for OpenLama. And in this case, I'm using the OpenLM research so this is the official authors of the repository and they have published this 30 hundred billion tokens trained model and you can go to hugging face and have a look at the tokens and uh, all of the implementation details that are they're talking through here but the important part here is the files and the versions and you can see that the easy LM version of this model is right here, but the weights for the Hugging Face Transformers library are actually within this folder. So you can't load the model just by spitting in the path to the repository. So the first thing that I'm doing here is to download this model. Then I'm installing some of the dependencies, in this case, the Transformers library and all of the necessary libraries to load a large language model. Since this is an open WAMA model, we are going to use the WAMA for causal language modeling and the WAMA tokenizer from within the Transformers library from the latest, at least on of this time, version of the Transformers library. And then I am actually going to write this function, which is going to print the response and put it and wrap the long lines that we're going to receive as an output. Then I am checking the device since I want this to run on CUDA I, and I have CUDA available. Next, we are going to set two 
tokens, the first is going to be the beginning of the sequence token ID, which is essentially every time when you input something that is, let me delete this, something that is starting a new sequence and then the same token that is used for ending of the sequence. And then this is the max tokens that the model we are going to work with. I'm not sure if actually this model has a larger context, but this is the maximum limit that we're going to run through when this is happening and when we're doing the prompting. Next, I'm going to load the model itself. So uh, this git clone is actually loading everything within this directory and then the weights are further within this directory. So I'm just pointing the path right here along with the content or slash content, which is essentially this root directory in the Google Club. So how do we load the model? I just used Llama tokenizer from pre-trained and then pass in the tokenizer path config and the what of the weights. And then I want to add an eight of end of sequence token. Next, I'm loading the model itself. Again, the same name, local files only. This will make sure that I'm just loading from this path. And then we are working with float 16 in order to load this model. I have tried to load it in an 8-bit, but it didn't work out for me. And I'm not sure that the model is actually compatible with 8-bit loading. And next, I want this to be loaded on the default map or default device. In this case, this is going to load the model on the CUDA device. Then we're setting the beginning of sequence token to the ID one that we've passed here. Let me do this. Next, let's try the a simple prompt. So this is the prompt. And then I'm going to get this generation config, which I'm going to pass into the model. In this example, I want uh, 256 new tokens. And this is the temperature that I'm giving. So this should give us somewhat of a random responses. Then I'm going to pass this through the tokenizer. And this whole process is very similar to what we've done with Alpaca Wara and Stable LM and other similar models. I'm just going to pass this through here. Let's see what do we have in the inputs. And these are just the token IDs for this prompt. And you can see that we are not adding padding or anything else. This is just working with the prompt. Then I'm going to do the inference itself. And you can see that I'm passing in the inputs. So these are the tokenized inputs along with the attention mask. And you can see that the actual device that they're running is the CUDA zero device or the GPU on this Google Co-op instance. So here I'm using inference mode for PyTorch. Let me just run this because it's going to take some time. And then we are passing in or running the generate method on the model. Well, I'm passing in the generation config, something pretty standard, and then the inputs from this tokenizer. And the tokenizer is actually giving, in this case, just the input IDs and the attention mask. So this is all running on the GPU. And this is, once again, a T4 with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And the inference takes about 21 seconds. Let's have a look at the response or the tokens from the response. And you can see that we have a lot of tokens as a response. And then I'm going to decode and print the response. And here is the response. So you can clearly see that this model is not working as expected. So I'm going to do something a bit different in order to fix this and try to prompt the model in a different way. In order to get better responses from the Open Wama model, I'm essentially taking most of the work that is provided by Riverson on GitHub. And this is Tom Misawa. So come along and yeah, I'm going to actually follow this guy. So he made this open Wama 7B hands-on repository. Let me just start it. Yeah. So in here, he has a very nice demo on how you can actually load the model itself. And then this chat core script is going to give you a much better 
feel of how he makes it work. So essentially what I've done is to take some of the code that uh, this dude is providing. And this is the way that I'm going to now prompt the model. Let's just run this and I'll show you two of the responses that we are going to get. It's going to take some time. So let's see how, how this is all working out. So first he is, we, or we have an implementation of top K sampling. So this is essentially taking the widgets of the tokens that are provided and then taking the top, in this case, 10 widgets or take top 10 tokens and then passing in as a token ID based on a multinomial distribution. So we're taking the 10 one and then the 10 tokens apply a softmax on top of that. And then we're going to use a normal or multinomial distribution in order to get an index. So this is the case that we're sampling k equal to 10. So let's see the response now with this approach to sampling. So here the world highest building is tower, a building meters high, currently Burj Khalifa. So as far I can tell, this is actually true. And when I pass in to Google, world highest building, it says that it's Burj Khalifa. So this is, this appears to be the case. So this response is somewhat much, it is much better actually. And it is, appears to be much better compared to the previous prompt that we did. And then let's go back on the process chat. So this is the function that we're going to call. And then you can see that I'm just prompting, I'm passing in the prompt, then taking the output token IDs or creating a list with passing in the initial input IDs. And then what is happening here, we are essentially going through a range from zero to max new tokens. And in our case, we're passing in as a default value of 256. So we are going through this loop and this loop is has a lot of code, but the gist of it is that on the first pass, we are essentially passing in all of the inputs to the model using a cache. And then we are taking some of the widgets and work with those previous values. And next on the next pass, on the input that is not zeroed element right here, we are just passing a single token ID. And in order to get this token ID, we are going to do the sampling from right here. So again, on the first pass, we're taking this token ID using top K sampling and passing in the whole input ID. And then we're just passing in a single token in order to get the widgets for it and do the sampling on it. Once we hit, and yeah, we're also saving the current token ID. Once we hit the end of sequence token ID, we are done with this loop or if we go and uh, limit the max new tokens or hit the limit of max new tokens. And finally, what we're doing here is to decode the output token IDs and I am calling skip special tokens in order to get a response that is much more print friendly. So this is the first prompt that I'm passing in. You're Michael G. Scott from the office, something that we did in what of the other, a lot of the other models that we've tried. And then I'm asking, what is your favorite phrase? And here is the output. I'm a bit too old to be doing this. What do you think of your characters in the office? So you can see that prompting, at least in this format, doesn't appear to be working very well. This reminds me of text DaVinci 003 or the model that is provided right before ChatGPT. So when we prompt in this way for a completion, it appears to be doing something. But when we do these types of prompts with the context and then providing an identity to the model, it appears that this model doesn't work. Of course, if you know a better way to prompt this model, please let me in the comments down below. I might not be doing something that is entirely correct. 
Let's try another prompt here. And I'm going to run this. So we've also tried to ask ChatGPT, Stable, LM, Dolly, etc. What is the best way to invite, uh, invite, invest $10,000? And in this case, I'm just passing in without uh, context or anything else. The best way to invest $10,000 is how much is a 5% return for a one year investment? How long would it take? Yeah, so the response is quite nonsensical ones. Let me try to run it again. And he, here is the final prompt that I'm going to try. And I'll show the, the response to that one as well. So the final prompt is the best make and model V8 manual gearbox car is. And let's ask Open Wama. So here is the response. The best way to invest $10,000 is to start by saving up to $5,000 and then buy stock that's already cheap. This is a more conservative way of investing. I think you're right, but the way you're describing it is more like buying a stock for 50 cents a share. So it appears that at least from the responses that I'm reading through, this is verbatim copying some text from somewhere. It doesn't look like a coherent response. Let's see here the best make and model V8 manual gearbox car is. The best. So it says GMC C10 with a 350 cubic inch engine. Okay, let's try another one. So it's 63 GMC C10. This is one opinion, of course, of this model. GMC Sierra. Four speed menu or GM Overdrive Auto. In this video, we took a look at Open Wama, and in our case, we had to run this model through Hugging Face Transformers library. We've seen that the running of the model is actually not that quite straightforward, at least compared to Stable LM and Dolly and the other models, but at least this model is completely open source and free to use. We had to do some clever sampling thanks to work that is already provided on GitHub. And if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. I'm going to write a detailed text tutorial that will include all of the source code for this model. And if you want to further discuss this, you can also join the Discord channel that I'm going to link in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.